Hey guys, welcome back to Mel Tips and Tricks. Have I got a video for you. I'm going to show you how I built what I call the Ultimate Metrology Center. I want to give a shout out to Metal Supermarkets, our new sponsor. I've been shopping with Metal Supermarkets now for the past 10 years. They are the world's largest supplier of small quantity metals. When they contacted me and said they wanted to sponsor my channel, I was so excited because I know with their support, I'm going to be able to do bigger and better projects for you guys. So I want to say thanks to Metal Supermarkets for helping make this video series possible. I want to talk about building the stand for the Ultimate Metrology Center. To build a stand that is going to support a granite surface plate that is six inches high, three inches wide, and four feet long, well, you got to think about it. It weighs almost a thousand pounds. And you need to design rigidity into the system and flexibility. So the rigidity, of course, is the stability that is going to keep the granite surface plates from crashing down but you also have to put flexibility in it. And those are two words that don't fit well together. Well, they have to, because we need to support this granite surface plate in such a way that it doesn't twist, but we can also level the whole stand. And we do that first by looking at how do you support something to keep it from twisting. And a lot of people will you talk about a surface granite plate being built or flattened on three points which it's correct, but if you want to keep it, in my opinion, flat over a long period of time, you actually have to support on four points. But how do you get four points balanced? That's the key. And we do it by using what's called a wiffle tree. It's a way of supporting something and equalizing the load over an entire surface. Another way you'll see a wiffle tree is in horse-drawn teams, and I'll show you a drawing of that. And you can see how the horses are hooked up in such a way that each one will be pulling equally on the final point. Well, to calculate the wiffle tree is, is very easy. It's not rocket science on something like this. But where to put the four points is. We use Bessel points to do that. And I did a whole video on what's called Bessel points and Airy points, which are very similar in their concept. The difference is, is the way over time gravitational forces are affecting something. So if we take a beam and we need to support it and we want to keep it consistently flat over time, well we know if there's too much force in the center, the beam is going to sag on both ends. If we put too much force on the outside, well the center is going to sink in. We need to find the equilibrium. And by using Bessel points, we can calculate that, that if we find two points inside, we will get the gravitational forces will act on equally. The end points and the center point will over time equalize and sag at the same amount. I'll give you some of the crude numbers. What we've got here is we've got a table that is four foot by three foot approximately. And the Bessel points for that means from the inside to where these points are that we need to rest the table on, they're 10 inches or 10 and a half inches here. And on this side, they actually come in at about 8 inches. And I am averaging out these numbers because no matter how accurate I figure this out, the table is always going to be moving, always out of position. So for me to calculate this out to three decimal points is overkill. And what we're going to do is set up these points and put a plate on top of them that are all matched up. And this is where the table is going to be allowed to float and have some flexibility, but also be locked in so it doesn't shift left to right. And these were actually really fun to make. And let me show you the video on making these. I want to show you now how to build this pin. And this pin, we need to make four of them and it's going to support the granite surface plate. And you can see there's a radius on the top of this. 
really easy part to make if you have a radius turner. And I want to show you a radius turner that I've been working on. It's really kind of an interesting design because it just slides right on my tool post and I can cut a radius really simple. But I can only do a convex, not a concave. That's one of the drawbacks. But it's pluses, I can just slip it on just like a tool and cut a quick radius, which that's what I'm going to show you. Now, I have not done a video on how to make this. This is actually my third prototype. They keep getting smaller and more condensed, and I don't have one that I really like that I want to show, but I do want to show you that this design is available. They're very easy to use. Just like any tool, you just set up to the center. This one I can adjust the radius by simply moving this dovetail and bring this in. And I'm going to rest it right on top, back it up, and tighten it down. And that should be a close enough radius for me. We're working with three quarter inch steel. The radius doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be in the ballpark. One of the things I'm struggling with on this particular design is I have not worked out a really a good way to hold the cutter, and I'm actually going with inserts that are just easier to work with. If you'll also notice that this sticks out quite a ways from the tool post, but remember, the forces coming against this cutter are this way, not straight down. So the vibration is pushing the machine this way, and it seems to work out okay. Like I said, I'm still struggling with things. The cut isn't bad. I'm going to come in here with some sandpaper and a file, just kind of clean it up a little bit. They're that easy to make. I'm going to cut this off two and a half inches long, and then I'll do the rest off camera. The shaft here is three quarter inch. When I set up for these plates, it's kind of the same concept, except this is a three quarter inch hole that's been dished out with a radius bit. Radius bits do not drill in the center very well. There's just the forces just aren't right, so you want to drill that out. You can also see we just cut these up on the bandsaw really quick and easy. Took them over to the belt grinder, ground off all the edges, also did a radius on each corner just to smooth these out. Pretty easy. And then when we're done, we'll actually have cork over the top of this, and that's going to be up against the surface plate because we don't want to have steel up against the granite for several reasons. One thing is the, the slide potential is really high. In other words, that's going to be a very slippery surface. Plus, hard material against the hard material is never favorable. Something is going to have to give. Now, I've already pre-drilled the holes for everything. You can see what I did here. I drilled the holes out at the end, and then I actually milled in a groove in the side and what that's going to allow me, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to TIG weld that in so that pin is held in securely. On the opposite side, I've got another set of pins and they're going to be welded on the outside of this beam. Now, the reason I'm welding it on the outside of the square tubing is because when I originally built a stand, I didn't know about vessel points and how to calculate them and I just guessed. Well, fortunately, I guessed pretty well. I thought it would be here in the center. 
I was wrong, but luckily I'm going to be able to put it right on this outside edge and be within the tolerance of what I'm working with. Now for our wiffle tree that we're building here, it's just simple. We know what the distances here need to be for these pins. Actually, let me rotate this around. We know what these distances are supposed to be, and we just have to find a center line and set up a pivot. Other things that are going to be additional here, we're going to take another piece of square tubing and support it out here on the end, and that will line up here, allowing this to have enough force to not bend our pivoting rod and will hold up the weight on this side because this is going to hold approximately 500 pounds of weight without other stuff on it. This stand also was designed to, of course, not just hold the weight of it in a rigid style, but also look cool. I ended up going with round steel tubing here. I think they are, I think it's two and a half inches. So that's two and a half inch pipe on all four corners. The square tubing here is two inches on the top. On the bottom, I actually reduced it in size. It's inch and a half, and it's all eighth inch thick walled tubing. To be honest, it's probably overkill except for the one issue. And I want to touch on that really quick. Originally when I designed this, I designed it with casters and it's sitting on casters now. And as I do this entire build, the casters are going to stay there. One of the final steps I'm going to do is cut off the casters, put legs on it with leveling posts. The reason I'm getting rid of the casters is I want to move this around with a pallet jack. Now, if I knew I was going to stay in this shop forever, and that I would be the only one moving this table, I would keep the casters on it. When I do move, the chances that somebody else is going to be coming in and moving my equipment is really high. And I didn't want some guy thinking he could just push this across the floor without something breaking. So with that being said, I'm going to build it so a pallet jack can come up underneath it. And we're going to have to build extra braces in here just for the pallet jack to lift it up, and I'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. Other things we're going to put on this is we're going to put in corner gussets all the way around. I personally think I've got it kind of overbuilt in some ways, but I don't want to find out later that I was wrong and this whole thing collapses and somebody gets hurt. So we're going to put gussets on it. And that's kind of where we're at. We also have some corner braces here. All those are for is to keep the surface plate from shifting one way or another. They'll also be padded in the corner, so if it does shift, it doesn't hit up against the corner and crack the granite surface plate, just because that wouldn't be cool. Now, let's get to doing some welding on this thing. 